Hi, I'm Bruce Busby, president of Roots Magic. And in this short video, we're going to talk about groups. Now, a group is basically just a group of people that you can give a name to. So, for example, you might create a group called Revolutionary War, and then you can add the people that were in the Revolutionary War that are in your database to that group. It's just a good way of grouping people that have something in common together so that you can kind of go down, go in and look at that group and, and see them kind of all grouped together. Now, there's two things that you'd like to be able to do with groups. One is you'd like to be able to see what groups a person is in. And the other one would be you'd like to be able to see what people are in a particular group. So let's look at the first one. If I want to see the groups a person is in, what I can do is over here on this little side panel, I can click on this last button called groups. And what that does is that brings me up a list of all the groups that I've created. And it has options to let me add a new group. So I can go right, that's, that's if I want to create a new group, that's all I do is I click on add a new group. And if I want to edit these groups, I can click on that edit group button and I can come in here and create new groups from here as well. Or I can edit a group to let me add or remove people easily, or I can just delete a group. If I don't want the group anymore, I can do that as well. Now, one thing you'll notice is that there's a checkbox in front of each group, and that basically shows me which groups a person's in. So if I uh, have this, this person highlighted, I can see what groups this person's in. If I select a different person, Okay, I can see that there's different groups that they're in. And so it makes it really easy for me to, uh, to basically not only see what groups I have, but see what groups each individual person's in. Now, there's also another way to see the groups and the groups a person's in by just opening up their edit screen. And when I'm on that edit person screen right there, there'll be a row called groups. And when I highlight that, it's the exact same screen as on the, on the main people view uh, with the check boxes. And you, again, you can just click and uncheck and to add and remove people. You also have the ability to add and edit the groups from here as well. So it works exactly the same. You can do it from the edit screen or you can do it from these main navigation screens uh, right here. Now, the other option that I said would be is nice is would be the ability to see uh, which people are in a particular group. And there's a couple of places you can do that. One of those is if I click this first button right here on the side panel, that brings up my index. This is just a list of everybody in the file. And right here underneath the search for that, there's a little drop list that says show everyone. I can click on this and I can select uh, select any group and when I select that group, it filters the list so I'm only seeing the people that are in that group. So this is how I can see the people that are in the military group, but I can select any of these other groups as well, or I can go back to show everyone and it shows everyone. Now I can also do this same type of thing uh, from this people list view right up here. If I click on the people list view, this is a list of everybody in the file as well. Let's you customize it and add columns you want, but it also has a drop list where you can select. So if I want to see that same military group, I can do that as well. The, this has the advantage that you can see other fields besides just the person's name and birth and death date. Okay, so now now what I want to do is I'm going to go back here to this group, to this group page. And as I mentioned, from here, if I want to create a new group, all I have to do is click on the little add button and it opens up the add new group. And so um, the first thing I need to do is give it a, give this group a, a new name and I can just call it my new group. You obviously want to use something more descriptive. You know, if the group is people born after 1800, you call the group people born after 1800. Okay, now there's two types of groups that you can add, and we're going to cover those in just a little bit. Um, the first group is what's called a free form group, and that's where I can go in and click select people, and Roots Magic brings up a list of everybody in the file, and they've all got a checkbox in front of them and I can select which people should be in that group. Okay, I can also click on mark, and so I can mark 
the families of the highlighted person or everyone in the file or everyone in the, this highlighted person's trees, their ancestors, descendants, genetic lines, data fields. That lets me go in and do something like, you know, everybody whose birthplace contains Delaware, you know, and, you know, lets me mark the people that way. Um, I can also do a saved search. If I've saved one of those searches, I can go in here and pick one of these saved searches and do that to mark the people that I want. I can also pick living and deceased people. So, um, and then I can also go unmark the same groups. You know, that's useful. For example, I might want to say, I want everybody except for this particular uh, ancestral line. I can go in and I can say, mark everyone in the file. And then that marks everybody. And then I can go in and say, unmark ancestors of the highlighted person. And then I can go through there and unmark them. And now I would have everybody except for that particular line. And then I'd say, select that. And it's going to show you how many people were selected uh, to be in this group. Okay, the other, the other group type is a saved criteria. Okay, so whereas this first one, I have to go and individually pick each person. Saved criteria lets me enter a criteria here and be able to use that criteria to select the group of people. And when I enter that criteria and click OK, it's going to, it's going to select the people that meet that criteria. And then in, at any time I can come back into this group and refresh that group of people. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a bit. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as a free form group with those people selected. I'm gonna click save. And so now I have right here, I have my new group. And so if I were to go, for example, if I were to go over here and pick my new group, there's all the people that were in that in that group. It's basically everybody except for the, the ancestors of that person that was highlighted. Okay, now the other button right here, and again, this is not only here on the side panel, it's also on the person's edit screen. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit, and I, I can pick a couple of things. So like if I were to uh, pick my, my new group or uh, my new group, I can come in here and I can click on edit and I can say select people. The people that I had already selected were, were there. I can go in here and I can say unmark everybody. So now they're all unmarked. And then I can just, I'll just go mark say three different people here. And when I click select, you'll see it's now showing that this group now contains three people. And so when I click save, that group is now saved and it has three people. And when I edit that, uh, I can do that. If I don't want this group anymore, I can come in here and just delete that group. Okay, now I can also have a group like this, my, my cool group. This one is the saved criteria group. And if I click on set criteria, it's going to show me the criteria that I have selected. And the, the criteria happened to be birthplace contains Pennsylvania. Now I'm going to cancel out of this. And you can see that right now it says 12 people were selected via the criteria. Now, one caveat here, if I go in to my database and add a new person or edit a person so that their birthplace is in Pennsylvania, they are not automatically added to this group. Okay, that's, that's the performance issue. You, you don't really want every time you make any little change for the program to have to go through every group and try to determine whether a person belongs in a group or not, especially if you have a large number of groups. But I actually did earlier, I did go in and add another person who was born in Pennsylvania. So what I would do is anytime I want to, I can come into a group and I can edit that group and I can just say, refresh the people. And you'll notice right now there's 12. When I refresh it, you'll notice now it's 13. So the nice thing about the save criteria is you don't have to remember the criteria. You don't have to remember how you added people to the group. The program is going to remember that. So when you come in and edit that, all you have to do is say refresh people. You don't have to go back in and try to remember how I created this group and, and try to recreate uh, and redo that. So it takes care of that for you. 
Okay, now, um, the last thing I want to show you is some tools that we've added uh, for using for using groups. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the left side to this menu called tools. And you'll see we have we have uh, a bunch of tools and this one right here, this create, edit and delete groups. If I run that selected tool, that brings up that same that same group list where I can edit and create new groups and everything. So we've already seen that one. But these two right here, delete everyone in a group. Okay, this is one of the most popular features requests that we've that we've had for years and years and years. And that is, is there a way to delete a bunch of people in my file all at once? In other words, maybe maybe I have this whole line of people in my tree and I don't want them anymore. How do I delete them? And we've never been actually put that ability in because it's really dangerous because you might actually mark more, more people than what you intended and then when you delete that group they're gone uh, and and this warns you you know this is going to permanently remove everybody so make a backup the nice thing about this is if i wanted to go create a group right here um, and delete or delete a group of people i can come in here and i can let's say that my new group that I just created, okay, I can go ahead and select that. If I were to run the selected tool here, it's going to delete those three people that I had checked, those three people that were in my new group. It would delete them from the database. Okay, the, re the reason that this is safer is because by creating a group, you can go in before you do this delete and actually look at that group and you can, you can go to the, um, go to the end of the people view. You can go into that people view there and look at everyone and you can look at my new group and you can make sure that these are really the people you want to get rid of and that there's not somebody in there accidental and go in and boom, you can delete. You can delete hundreds or thousands or whatever of people all at once. Uh, so be careful when you use it, but it's a, it's a, it's a nice tool uh, to be able to finally be able to offer. The, the next one, and this is actually a really cool feature, is to be able to combine and manipulate groups. So um, sometimes you create several groups and you'd like to see how those groups relate to each other. Well, what we do here is we let you take two groups and we allow you to combine them in different ways and create a new group. So what I want to do is I want to go, um, I want to, I want to actually go in here to this tool because I want to show you, I've created two groups. I've created group one and group two just to kind of demonstrate this without it being confusing. So group one, when I click on edit, uh, it's, it's, it's a free form group and it has four people selected and the four people now, this is a bad way to do it. The four people are named A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 and D, 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 D. So A, B, C, and D are the four people for group one. And the four people for group two, the four people for group two are C, D, E, and F. Okay, and that's, this is actually going to be easier to show it, to show this here. Group one, there they are. A, B, C, D, group two. C, D, E, and F. So the two groups have in common C and D is in both groups. Okay, and those, those are the ones that are in common that you, that you have in common. So I'm going to come back here to tools and I'm going to run this combine and manipulate and I'm going to select group one and group two. And then the first one I'm going to say is I want the people that are in both group A and group B. And I'm going to call this group three. Now, now group A and group B are basically right there. Select group A and group B. So don't get confused about group one and group two. That's just what, what I named it. So I'm going to combine these two and create a new group called group three of the people that are in both groups. Okay, I'm going to run the tool. New group of three is created. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to look at that group three. 
And there it is. Those are the two, C and D. So you now have a new group that is made up of the, of the people that are in both groups. Okay, I'm going to come back over here again. I'm going to pick another one. I'm going to pick in group A, but not group B. So in other words, I want the people that are in the group, this group, but aren't also in this one. And I'm going to call this one group four. I'm going to run that tool. It's created it. We're going to come back over here. We're going to look at group four. Okay, and there we have it. Group A, person A and person B are in group one but they weren't in group two. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna pick the third way of combining them that are in either group A or group B. Now this one, basically what it's saying is, I want everybody, take both groups, combine them together, but don't give me any duplicates. And we're gonna call this group five because we want them to be, it doesn't matter if they're in group A or group B, we want them. So we've created group five, come over here and look at group five. And there we have it, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, it's done, done both, uh, both the groups. And then the final one is I want the ones that are in group A or group B, but not both. I'm gonna call that six. We're gonna run it, it's created that. Now we're gonna come look at group six. Okay, and there are the people that are in group A or B, but they're not both. And as you, we, as you saw, person C and D we're in both groups, so they're, they're, they're basically filtered, filtered out. So now this seems kind of silly using people named A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, but what this lets you do is you may have a group called um, Civil War, which has people in the Civil War, and you might have another group called, um, you know, such and such family line. Well, you can use these group functions to combine those in different ways to do things like say, only show me people that are in this ancestral line that were in the Civil War. You know, and I mean, there's countless, there's countless other ways that you can use these group functions to create new groups um, that, are, that, are, that are completely customized uh, for what you want. Anyways, I hope you found this useful, the, the, this little demo on, on using groups. And thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.